I won't call your father. I promise. I understand. Look, I'm tired. I don't want to talk anymore. Okay. You get some rest. Everyone here is on your side. You're safe. Thank you so much for leading me here. Everything's been so crazy lately. I haven't had a chance to get into Mercy. I'm just glad you called. We need to get you started on a new treatment plan. Well, what are we talking about? Another round of chemo? A much more aggressive course this time. So the side effects will be stronger, and I'm not going to be able to hide the fact that I'm sick. Okay. I can set you up for your first appointment next week. What? No, no, that's too soon. I want to wait till after Christmas. I strongly advise against that. Right. Doctor, I'm going to beat this cancer. But right now, I need to save my strength for another fight. My family. You've convinced me to stay on the case. You're doing the right thing. Let's hope so. And uh, let's hope you were joking about what you said about the Hayward side. Because ambition is one thing, but what drives... David, that's something else. So, what's our next move? Well, go on over to my house and grab all of Annie's case files and meet me over at the hospital. Okay. Don't worry, I got the check. Stalking me? No. You were at my apartment before, and now you're here? Well, I was... I'm here for the California rule. Mm. And I was at your apartment because I was understandably concerned about you. You know, what was Bailey deciding to stick around, Stuart? Yeah, I have been trying not to think about it, but it has been so hard. You miss him. I remember when Kathy was out there somewhere. I didn't know how I was going to get through the day, but it'll get easier. Friends help. Set of plans. Oh, uh, yeah. Listen, um, about that. You didn't seem too fired up about it, so I kind of sort of gave the plant to Jake so he could give it to a sick friend. Hmm. Yeah. So you, you came here for the California roll, huh? Yeah, yeah, that and um, Crystal and I have this thing going where we sort of uh, challenged one another to get back out there, you know, kind of stick a toe into the dating pool. Mm -hmm. And I figured, you know, usually there's so many single people here that I was lucky somebody would join me. I think that is a really good idea. <laughs> well, so did I. Is it? I gotta tell you, now that I'm here... <sighs> Come on, if anyone can do this, it's you. Well, I appreciate the shot in the arm, but... <laughs> Let's face it, the days of Tad the Cat are dead and gone. Lately, I feel more like Tad the Dad. Uh, excuse me, Tad the Cat, that is not over. And, um, one little piece of advice, when you do find the right woman, Go with the flowers, not the plants. Just saying. What's going on here? Jake brought me a, a peace offering. But honestly, I'm the one that should be apologizing to both of you. <sighs> wow. Where would I even begin? When I first came to learn that Trevor was mine, I wanted to create an instant family. Now, how would I do that? I tried to break up your marriage so that Amanda could be a part of it. Force her to move in. 
When I saw that her heart wasn't in it, I realized I had to come up with another idea. Try to get us to conceive another child. David, you can stop there. I think we all know the story. No. Trust me. You think you know it, but you don't. Now, obviously, you know that we never made it to the clinic that day for the procedure. But did you know that I manipulated the whole situation? I took advantage of it, Amanda. Now, don't get me wrong, Jake. I, I didn't force Amanda to do anything. I just gently pushed her to try to conceive a child in that car. Now I realize that I've ruined a lot of lives. I've hurt a lot of people, especially you, Amanda. I mean, this disease, I believe, is my punishment. I deserve it. I deserve to die a painful death.